The storyline that has shocked the NFL world is without a doubt Michael Penix. It's the number one headline from this entire draft, and the Falcons are going to have to answer questions for it for a long time. One thing that came out since the draft from Charles Robinson of Yahoo Sports gives you a little inside look at what the Atlanta Falcons were thinking, their process, and stuff like that. They had Michael Penix rated as their number two quarterback behind only Caleb Williams and ahead of Jaden Daniels. Listen, if you like Michael Penix that much, this is the entire thing. I have no problem with you taking him. Like I've said, even though I wasn't the biggest Michael Penix guy, I'm not a quarterback guru. I can also re recognize that in terms of arm talent, he's up there with any guy on the face of this earth. I mean, it's Josh Allen-esque when you watch him throw the ball downfield into tight windows and with the velocity necessary to get into those tight windows, whether it's in between safety, whether it's down the sideline, it really is something special. And you understand how that could look extremely impressive at a pro day or at a private workout like the Falcons held in apparently 50 degree weather. The issue is if you have this much conviction in a quarterback, why are you handing a guy 180 million? And that's where you lose me every single time. You can't have it both ways. To win a Super Bowl, there is such a minute, you have to get everything so right. You either have to have a quarterback on a rookie contract and build around him. You have to have a veteran like Kirk Cousins or Aaron Rodgers playing at that level, that MVP level. We saw Kirk Cousins play prior to to the injury and then you have to get all those draft picks right in some form or fashion you have to have draft picks contributing on rookie contracts to make the most out of your roster to contend for a Super Bowl and you're not going to get that with Penix or Kirk Cousins because you decided to hedge your bets and that's where you lose me every single time yeah you won't be able to maximize Kirk Cousins deal or Michael Penix's rookie contract you won't be able to maximize either because they're now running consecutive with one another. And, you know, in, in one light, it's, you know, great that the Falcons could potentially, in an ideal world, go from Cousins to Michael Penix, 15 years at the least of good quarterback play. We'll never be losers again like we really were watching Marcus Mariota on Thursday Night Football throw from his back. That is honestly an attractive, you know, proposition. But then again, you have to think about it like, are you hedging? Are you just are you more scared of that Marcus Mariota than you are wanting to be a Super Bowl contender? Because that's what I see. It's the one foot in, one foot out. Like we don't, we're so scared of being in quarterback purgatory that we don't want to go all in per se. And I think that's cowardly. I, I think I respect the fact that you're trying to stabilize the most important position in all of sports. It's not even a question. It's not even an argument. There's nothing even close. Quarterback is the most important position. You cannot win a Super Bowl in today's era without at least above average quarterback play. Now, maybe in the 90s you could because all you had to do was play good defense and hand the ball off to a Hall of Famer, but that's not the case any longer. So I can respect that approach. What I can't respect is the process and how flawed it is. And I said it twice already, and I'll continue to say it again. I think it's either one or two ways, and both of them are bad. Either one, you truly think Kirk Cousins makes you a Super Bowl contender just signing him as the roster stands. That's pretty damning because that defense is not. Or you're just making it up as you go along. You wanted Kirk Cousins, and then less than two months later, you're like, well, we want Michael Penix. What's to stop you from liking Carson Beck next year? This is just an example. Like, what's stopping you from liking the next quarterback and the next? Like, the, either situation is bad. And I and and quite frankly, having Michael Penix as the number two quarterback when I feel safe in saying nobody else did is once again alarming. At or at work at best, excuse me. At best, it brings doubt into the mind of how you assess quarterbacks. And I'll let you take it from here. You got Zach Robinson in the building. Maybe you trust him a little bit more than some of these other guys. He did have the Patrick Mahomes thing before everybody else did. Yeah, I mean, and the Zach Robinson thing, he is noted as a quarterback guru, and he's had a lot of success early on in his career. He's one of the hottest. We love that hire. We've said that a million times. And we do trust that if he has that guy. But everyone does talk about the Patrick Mahomes I don't know what he has had other great quarterback grades, but I'm sure there's several other situations where he might have had another guy that didn't quite. Now, Patrick Mahomes is the one everyone remembers because mm -hmm. it was so great, but I'm sure there were several others that weren't quite as great that don't get talked about as of. Well, I just wrote something about this because I keep seeing people reference the Z-Rob thing where it's like, if he gets your you know voice of support, it's like, oh, wow, you know that means a lot. Like you said, the only one we really hear about is Pat Mahomes. Honestly, it's the only one you really need. He's the GOAT. But also, 
let's just put it in perspective how big of a voice the offensive coordinator has compared to a guy like Ryan Pace, the right-hand man of Terry Fontenot, the director of player personnel. And let's go look at his track record with quarterbacks. Mitchell Trubisky over Patrick Mahomes, Justin Fields, Andy Dalton. Like his track record for a guy who surely has a bigger voice than the offensive coordinator is terrible. It's a terrible track record, quite frankly. Yeah, and then the other thing is you're if you really do like it, like they said he's QB2, and they have this true conviction in Michael Penix is that type of prospect. You're confusing me on how much you truly believe in either Cousins or Penix by hedging your bets. Like if you truly believe Kirk Cousins is enough to get you over the top right now, why are you drafting Michael Penix? And if you truthfully think Michael Penix has this Matt Stafford, Patrick Mahomes type ceiling, why are you paying Kirk Cousins? And if you didn't know that, if you didn't think Michael Penix was going to be there at eighth overall, which is a shocking thing to think. And you didn't think you could make a move maybe up the board to get your guy. That's absolutely shocking, which tells me, you either don't truly have the conviction in, one, in either of these guys, really, because you're hedging your bets, as we just said, or you're not doing your homework in the proper <laughs> manner because you're not, you should have known that Patrick, I love Michael Penix and he's going to be there and he's our guy. You should have known that before you signed Kirk Cousins or you, sh- or you shouldn't have signed Kirk Cousins. So you're either not doing your homework or you don't truly have the conviction that you're telling us you have in this guy because you went and you hedged your bets with, Mike, with Kirk Cousins. Yeah, the, again, the process is going to be scrutinized until the Falcons are either proven right or wrong. Vindication isn't for years and years to come, though, so we're just going to be stuck having these same conversations for the next two seasons. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into some Braves talk. A.J. Mentor, this is a guy that deserves a contract extension right now. 